me in spirit pro He ain't got no self-control Get a robin' and sow your soul so what you do when things are unjust? How do crime of our cuffs? Moving the spine upon us. We ain't relying on luck. Keep that out. Young Deontay Shaw, what's up, my guy? What's going on? International. Hey. How you feeling today? Hey. <laughs> it's my brother right here, Young Deontay Shaw, bro. First of all, great morning to you, and I'm happy that you made time for not only me, but my Facebook family today. Oh, yeah. No doubt, man. Anytime. You know, if you call, I'm coming. That's what it is. It's, it's a given. You heard me? It's overstood. You feel me? <laughs> so picture this up. I was saying um, I was going to let a few more people get in here. And any advice I get or any uh, insight I get, you know what I'm saying? I look at it as life hacks. Somebody gave you a life hack to something. You dig? So I'm asking people today what they want to get their finances in order, you know, or uh, would they get ahead if they could, you know what I'm saying? So everybody don't know the science of finance. Everybody don't know the science of money. Mm -hmm. So what I did today, I made time, and Mr. Shaw, Deontay Shaw made time for y'all today to give you any insight, any answer, any questions y'all have. You heard me? This is a young financial guru. You heard me? So look, the man didn't accept no money to come on here today, uh, nothing. He just wanted to be able to tap in with some people and give y'all some insight. So the first question I got, you heard me, before I give the people the opportunity to ask some questions, you heard me, is how long have you had interest into the finance side or the money side? How long have you been just like you realize it tapped into you like, whoa, this is my thing. Well, I believe and 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 I and I say this not lightly. Um ever, ever since I was probably in the eighth grade, I had an opportunity um from Detroit. Nice. And there wasn't a lot of programs up there, but I had an opportunity to go to a uh investment class. Mm. Right. I was it was like the first investment class that they were offering over at Brooks Middle School on the west side. And um, you know what? My mom gave me the option. She said, look, you can go to this investment class and I have been bugging her about it. Or you can go out of town right. with your family and go hang out. Right. Right. Of course, being young, I chose to go hang out. But that never got in the way of my interest of what money is, how money works. What are we supposed to do with it, right? Yeah. Going out, earning it, and spending it can't be the the end all, right? Because there's other people doing other great things with money. True, right? true. And, and and it took a long time. Um, I was in transportation. I own my own trucking company, and nice. um, I was in transportation for about 17 years. I even got my bachelor's degree in transportation and, and logistics. And it took a while. Um, but I always, it, it, I was always dealing with money. I was always helping people figure out, hey, what do you do? How do you do it? Doing research. I got tons of books, right? And um, it just happened on me, man. It was like, look, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be helping people figure out what their next move is, figuring out what to do and how to do it, right? Um, dealing with finances and money. Right. This, this is awesome, bro. This is awesome. Hey, y'all tapped in. Hey, bro, I see we got a few people on here. Hey, tag somebody, share somebody that's cool. You're going to get a first class visit on how to step your finances together and how to prepare for your near future with young Mr. Deontay Shaw. You hear me? So finances, what are some of the first steps somebody could do uh, to get with you to work on their credit, possibly? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of like one of the most common things people talk about when they when they yell at me, you know what I'm saying? We go on here, man, I want to get behind my music career. I want to get behind my acting career. I want to get behind this hair salon. I got this great invention I want to do, or uh, I want to pursue my education further, but they can't really figure out uh, the funding for that. And then sometimes it boils down to credit. So what can we start with that in your eyes, um, Mr. Shaw? Well, I'm not a credit repair for, uh, professional. Um, I do work with um, credit repair professionals who've been doing it for a long time. And I, I think that that's part of uh, how we operate, right? We get people, uh, we build a team around you, right? So 
Mr. International Jones comes to me and he says exactly what you say, right? In my, you, you being my client, I have a team that's around me that then becomes organically your team as well, right? And we can make the connections and I, I don't get paid from them for sending you over there to them, right. but it's a, it's a synergistic process, right? Mm -hmm. And so just from my point of view and what I've been talk talking to, 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 to my people about and my team about when it comes to credit, you know, it's different things that you can do with your credit as far as, hey, utilization, you know, credit card utilization, right? Um, making sure you're paying things on time. And in fact, that's one of the key elements, one of the five key elements to foundational planning is debt pay down, right? Paying down your debt because we want to increase cash flow. We want to increase cash flow so that we're then able to do other things with that additional cash flow that will eventually grow your money, grow your net worth. You know, you could put you could pour it back into your family, so to speak. See, a lot of people don't get a chance to um to be fortunate enough to have the information that they need. You know what I'm saying? It's always been just street money or just cash. I'm gonna pay cash for I'm pay cash for it. And another thing, conversation that people don't want to talk about why is it so ugly of a conversation to have to talk about life insurance why why is people so scared to talk about life insurance bro like what is what is it what is it how people are so scared to prepare for the future like that you know what i'm saying well for a long time um we were not, not able to get life insurance as black people hmm. right we were, that was one of those things that, hey, we're not going to insure you. And so that's where we got, and being here in New Orleans, right? We got all these social and social aid and pleasure clubs, right? They were originally created to provide, again, social aid to the community, burial mm -hmm. services, um, family relief, because we couldn't go out and get that stuff just like our other counterparts out here in the world could do, right? Mm -hmm. And so that stigma has stuck with us through generations. Could you imagine your great grandfather telling you, yeah, we wasn't able to get that. You know, I would depend on this situation or that situation. And then that keeps getting passed down. Right. right. And so that becomes the mindset. Then now we got jobs. Right. right. Your job provides you with life insurance. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, here's the problem with that. You got life insurance all the way up while you're working then when you get ready to stop working you no longer have life insurance that's crazy right right and so with all of that combined that's the that's the hard conversation around life insurance let's just keep it 100 right a lot of people when they talk about life insurance it's, it's taboo it's scary because it's like oh man i'm talking about this a few things come to my mind i'm dying tomorrow right you're not dying tomorrow you're going to die one day, that's for sure, right. right? When you were born, you were on that journey to the end, sure. right? So so you're going to die one day, that's for sure. It may or may not be tomorrow. But if it is tomorrow, let's talk about how you can leave a legacy behind for your family. Let's talk about how you can help them complete the things that you didn't get a chance to complete, right? So, you know, it's, it's taboo in that way, but I, my goal is to make it not be like that, right? It's, it's not either or. It's not either you have this type of life insurance or you have this type of life insurance. It's you need some, period. Like a man. Like a man. I said the same thing. I said, look, man, the conversation should not be unattractive, and we all got to be grown up. And I share it with anybody watching, bro, who – wants to sit down and say okay yeah that's planned the end but the reality is this when you got to this point of being a mature adult you say to yourself i don't want my children you know and their siblings arguing over x y and z trying to figure it out who's going to put help do this you don't want god forbid your mother trying to figure oh my god how are we going to bury how are we going to do this you know oh my god you know, you know people trying to uh, put fish plates together fry fish place trying to raise money you know what i'm saying like this whole conversation today is to help people that look like me and you to avoid 
some of those things. Now, I'm not trying to say that you wrong for wanting to figure it out your way to help your family. But I'm saying, what if you had the opportunity to work on it now? So it isn't the headache and it's already set in place for everything to go smoothly. And plus, you know, when you are, when that time do comes, whatever legacy you plan to continue, whatever support system you want to give your kids, your mother, grandmother, whoever, it can continue on. And this is the person I have on here today to talk about it. So I, I'm having a raw candid conversation of something I too kind of like was looking at, you know, like with this, the bad, the so I, but the reality is we need to have a conversation and you need to be able to talk to somebody that look like you or feel like you about how to go about handling that. You heard me? You heard my brother Shaw said it ain't about which policy you have. It's hot to have one. <laughs> Start with one and you go from there. You know what I'm saying? So you want to expound on that, Brother Shaw? Brother Jones, one, one thing before we go there. Um, I just want to let everybody know, you know, um, compliance, right? I'm not your financial advisor, right? If you want to talk to me, we'll talk about how to do that at, at, later on, right? But this information that I'm giving you it's more educational information, right? It's not advice. Sure. Just want to put that out there to everybody, okay? Sure. Um, and again, I'm going to be transparent. That's compliance, right? Sure. Because at the end of the day, somebody, you, you, we all did the experiment in sure. school, right? Teacher sure. tells somebody at the front of the class something, by the time it gets to the 30th student and back to the teacher, it's something totally sure. different, right? Different. <laughs> so, totally. so it's a comp Right. And so it's a compliance thing. And so I have to tell you guys, hey, this is education. If you want to talk to me, because everybody's situation is different. Right. right. So one, no one shoe fits everybody thing. It, it, it never works like that. Everybody's situation is different. So I want to tell you that. But another thing that I wanted to, um, to point out about, you know, as you're as we're getting into that conversation about life insurance, this is just one aspect of uh, foundational planning right wow. um one aspect okay and it's the toughest conversation to have in our community right but check this out anytime you talk to anybody about life insurance a lot of times the reply is going to be i don't need that right and, and i often come back to them and say that's cool you may not need it right, right? but what about the people that you're leaving behind right because right. Those people are going to mourn you, whether you want to believe it or not. And by you having to have them concerned with a fish fry or a GoFundMe, they can't mourn you properly. Not only that, they got to go directly back to work after you put in the ground, right? You're speaking. You, 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 you preaching right now, fam. So, so they at work, they on that oil rig out there in the Gulf, concerned about you, you dead and gone. But everything else that you left behind, right? You left debt, right? right. You left kids, right? They got to be cared for. Got to be sent to school. They got to be bought school clothes. They got all this stuff has to happen. Life goes on when you're not here. You right. left all of that. And you said when you was living, I don't need it, right? What about the people that do need it? What about those people that left behind? And so it's more of, okay, and I hear this a lot from a lot of young, my 20-somethings, right? They say this a lot. And I always say, look, it's more about those people. We got to get out that mindset that it's just about me. It's about the people you leave them behind. Your mama, your dad, your, your children. These people are living life right. that they have never lived before, right? right? And that's without you. How do they now move, right? And money is not going to replace you. Let's right. get that out there. Money is not going to replace you. But what it does is it helps people to mourn you properly. It may take it may take your mom a year to right. get back into it. Right. But how can she maintain for a year, right? If she got to go directly back to work, or if she don't have any money to keep her going for that year, you know that's just food for thought. To be financially disrupted you know what i'm saying by already by this devastating situation of of mourning somebody being gone for those that want to come on that are, that are trying to come on on the video i may not be able to add you on the video but i'm asking you that you please type in questions you may have 
for Mr. Deontay Shaw. Just type in some questions. You hear me? We're talking about life insurance. You hear me? We're talking about financing. We're talking about making things a tad bit easier. You know what I'm saying? For your loved ones to not have to be um, pulling itself together behind not only losing you, but trying to hold yourself together financially after. So if y'all got any questions, feel free to type them in. I'm going to read it as we go. Quite sure he's going to answer as we go. You know what I'm saying? But that is real, bro. When we, um, i never forget this. My father transitioned in uh, 2010. Um, two months after I got married. Who could ever figure that, bro? Two months after seeing his son walk down the aisle, my father passed away. Um, and I had to close my father's eyes and get myself together and make some very, very hard decisions about him in that transitioning stage. And I will never forget this, bro. I sat down with family members and I'm quite sure that they would have possibly had a policy on how close these other relatives were, right? Mm -hmm. But um, my mother remembering, of course, she had a policy, a small one. You know, a small one, but still indeed she had one, right? And um, they're trying to figure who's going to take care of what, right? But mm -hmm. some people being quiet about whatever policy they could have, right? And hey, man, I'm not bringing this up, trying to open up a can of worms. I'm just, I made an observation. My mother paying on a policy for all these years, she got tired of the bickering and them assuming that his son was just going to fit the bill. Right, mm -hmm. she spoke up and said, "All right, we we not we y'all all this arguing about his dad. Like, now nah, we're not doing this. I'll take care of it. It's good seeing y'all. We got up and we left. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. But her having that policy in place, you heard me, made it us able to not only to facilitate his his home going, right, mm -hmm. having the priority, mm -hmm. and being able to take care of some other." means and things that he would have wanted to see happen mm -hmm. you know we're not judging where you want to spend your money one brother said priorities that everyone should have but so many don't have the sacrifice most men will have a ten thousand dollar ice grill and no life insurance policy appreciate that craig williams yeah man he's also making an observation we're not judging all right i'm not judging we're just making observations and giving better outcomes better solutions you know what i'm saying and uh another brother jesus uh maniza says f that open the cans up just like people don't like doing a doctor get a check them don't nobody like to admit that they are dying that's real bro i'm happy you brought that up i need to reach out to a brother also that i heard was ill you hear me pride is why pride is why it could be greed it could be selfishness all kind of things but the reality is this here you know, some type, some course and point in time, we have to come into the reality of our more immortality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And all, all Mr. Shaw and myself are doing is just letting you know it's okay to see people that look just like you, that has certain, some of the same concerns, but decided to take the initiative and the plan ahead. And he's sharing... Uh, like I said, he made time this morning to share with you guys and myself different options on preparation that are strictly being advice. He's not saying, hey, all you guys better listen. He's just giving you advice and things you can add to your playbook to have a better household. That's, that's about right, right? Yeah, education. Education. He's informing you. Um, he's saying pride is why. Um, what kind of life insurance policies are commonly have by uh young brothers you know what I'm saying sisters out there what kind of common policies that they normally get and what kind of policies would you advise that they look into so first off um again everybody's situation is different right and so i wouldn't say that there is one policy or another that i would give a client or tell a client that hey look at this or look at that it depends on the situation right it, it, it strictly depends on that but the two most common types of policies that everybody hear about and everybody may have heard coming and going and one in particular because everybody has a job has mm -hmm. right the first one is going to be term right 
term life insurance, right? The second one is whole life insurance, right? Or permanent, right? right? Whole life or permanent. And you're going to hear good things and bad things about each one of them. And there are good things and bad things about each one of them. Term life insurance, right? Term life insurance, I always tell my clients, it's like renting the house, okay? It's exactly what it says it is, right? You got that term policy for a certain amount, for a certain amount of time. Right. And when that time is up, that policy is up. So say, for instance, if you got a 10-year policy, a 10-year term policy, that means you pay your premiums for that certain amount of insurance okay. for 10 years. After that 10 years is up, the insurance is over. You can either get more insurance, right, for another 10 years or 20 years, mm -hmm. or you don't have no insurance, right? Now, the upside to having a term policy is Say you're 20 years old, right? And um, you're just getting life started. You're just getting going. And you don't got a whole lot of money, but you want to make sure that everything is covered, right? Term policies are inexpensive, right? You can get a term policy for way less than you can get a whole life policy, right? Mm. So you can get more money for, for less, for less, oh uh, less, right, to, to cover you. Now, you're still growing. You're doing a lot of things. So you need that. The goal is that when you reach a certain age, you won't need so much insurance because you got so many assets and so forth and so on, right? And so term insurance works in that particular situation, right? Okay. So it's inexpensive. Um, you can get more for less, right? But here's the downside. Price changes over time. So for the first two years, it may be a certain price. The next two years, it may go up to a certain price all the way till you get to 10 years. It'll be at a different price. And then when you renew or when you get some more insurance, guess what? That insurance is going to be higher because you're older. Right. As you age, life insurance costs more money and it's no different in the term policy. It changes. Now, you do have some policies where it stays the same the whole time. You do have some like that. Right. Right. So it's one six in one hand, half a dozen in the other, I right? I guess. Now whole life or permanent life is like buying a house, mm -hmm. right? When you buy a house, you pay money into that, that house. A portion of that money goes to principal. The other portion goes to interest, right? Mm -hmm. And so the premium or the amount that you pay every month for the whole life insurance, mm -hmm. half of that or a portion of that, a portion, I don't know exactly the split, but a portion of that would go towards the cost of insurance. I got you. The other portion would go towards what we call a cash bucket. Mm. And so in that cash bucket, it actually has, it actually grows at different rates. Across the industry, you got different insurance companies that have different rates at which that cash bucket grows. They also have different times in which you can access that. Right, okay. Right, right. So it, it's just different all because I'm just giving you a broad overview of the difference between the two, right? So a portion of the insurance, a portion of the premium goes towards the actual cost of insurance, and the other portion goes towards the cash bucket, right? And it grows over time. Right. Now, that's the good side to that, right? You your money is going up, 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 right? Most of the time. Um, it's not any issues with that. People don't see an issue with that because they're paying for it. And you have this insurance for the rest of your life. You don't have to renew it. You don't have to change it. You don't have to do any of that. The premium stays the okay. same your entire life. Okay. If you're paying a hundred dollars today, when you turn 150 years old, if you're still paying it, you're gonna be paying 150 dollars. Okay. And it's gonna pay, right? It's gonna pay out, right? So the downside is it costs a lot of money, okay. right? Because, and the reason that it costs a lot of money is like this. Whole life insurance is going to pay you. It's going, as long as you keep the premiums up, it will pay you no matter how old you get, right? right? It'll pay your family. Term life insurance, I think they did a study 
and only a, a small percentage of term policies actually pay out. Not because they're with a bad insurance company, not because the insurance companies don't want to pay, not for those reasons. Most people don't, they either don't die within the term. So if you got all these 10 year term policies and nobody dies in 10 years, guess what? All that money, it never got paid out, wow. right? Um, um, so you got to get another policy, right? And so if you got a 20 year policy, mm -hmm. all those policies, people paid into those policies, they never paid out. Mm -hmm. And so insurance is a numbers game, okay. right? The, the law large numbers. So if they had a thousand or a hundred thousand people dying that had term, term policies, then they probably would cost a little bit more money because now we find out that people are only living for 10 years and we offer these 10 year policies. We got to charge more money. We lose uh, money, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So unlike the whole life policy where it, we know you're going to die. Right. So we're going to charge right now for this policy because we know you're going to die. Right. Right. So that's pretty much the difference. And of course, it's a whole bunch of nuances, you know, associated with whole life that we can go into um, individually to kind of give you an idea of how they different work. You know, and it branches off from there, man. They get it got so many different policies under permanent. And then the term policies, they can you can do them so many different ways. But the whole goal is just to get you to understand there are two types of policies. The policy you got at work, that's the term policy. You got that policy for as long as you work for that company. That's it. When you no longer work for that company, you no longer have this. I'll tell you like this here. A lot of people want to quit with that to know the difference of that they got to feel like they're being preyed on just to get this type of information mm -hmm. you know, they walk in a building you know what i'm saying it's uncomfortable this man is taking time out of his day to give you information that you can apply to your life now to your life now you hear me so i want you to share this ask questions if you have it you know what i'm saying we don't have all day with him he got things to do too Mm -hmm. I want you to ask him now, you hear me? And I want you to be able to follow him on uh, social media, uh, Deontay Shaw. You know what I'm saying? I want you to follow him, ask him the questions y'all may need. Because guess what? He is not saying, come into my office right now. Give me a W-9, you know what I'm saying, for you into my office. He's not saying <laughs> Okay, before we talk, I'm going to need your social security number. You know what I'm saying? He's not saying, let me see your last three statements before he's even talking to you and talking to me. So we not only appreciate that. So you see, they got different terms of life insurance policies that apply to your life. You know, it's a variety. You know what I'm saying? So tell me this here. Another life hack is I've heard the super rich get these policies and that they'll end up taking out loans on these policies to invest into their dreams. That's true. Um, they do that. You, you, not, listen, the super rich do it, right? But you and I could also do it, right? Say it again. Hold on, 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 you out there that's supporting your music career, that's investing into your daughter with music, that's investing into your daughter's legal uh, career in school, that's investing into your son being an engineer. Did you hear what he just said? You do not have to be the super rich to take a life insurance policy and get a loan from it to invest into any business plans you have for yourself. That's a life hack, man. Bruh. Not many people had those conversations. You feel me? Mm -hmm. A lot of real estate developers do this. Yes. A lot of independent entrepreneurs do this. I don't know if y'all yeah. know. Y'all got any questions, tap in now. Deborah Wooten, what up? Get Trice, how you doing? Uh, Lewis Edwards, what it do? Jared Wright, Johnny Holloway, Lamont Chapman, Raymond Red Roberts, David Stewart, Barbara Wilson, Samuel Black. What up, man? 
I know y'all not hearing Eno Neal. I know y'all not hearing all these this good, good, these good gems being dropped. He like they got a jewelry store. He's just showing y'all all the diamonds. What you, what you like? Yellow diamonds, white diamonds, black diamonds. He's showing y'all all the jewels. And y'all don't got too many questions, man. What's up, man? And everybody, and all the time we're gonna be blessed to have this like this here. I'm hoping just to have him be able to come in once a month and give y'all updates on what it takes to have life insurance to be able to protect yourselves, what it takes to be able to turn up on your financing. He could uh show his team, invite you to a team that can help you on dealing with your credit. And on top of that, also being able to show you what to do with your finances, period. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody don't know where to invest at. You know what I'm saying? We're not being offered the hedge funds, but guess what? You could talk to people like this right here. They help you show you not only how to start one, how to join one, you hear me? how to become one. You feel me? So that's what we're doing today, baby. Who got that fire? You hear me? Your man, International Jones and Mr. Deontay Shaw. You hear me? Representing the day to give you the knowledge. Any questions, please, 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 please type them underneath. And ask while we are on the live right now. Craig Williams, I appreciate that. Indica to Darwin. I hope I'm saying that right. If I totally screwed up your name, judge my head, not my heart. You know what I'm saying? Dean Duvall, what up? Take your time and write your questions. Guess what? I'm not judging you if you misspell anything. All the correct is not all the time, y'all friend. We're not judging. <laughs> <laughs> We're not judging. We're not judging. Yeah, I said to myself, man, I asked my wife the other day, I was like, baby, man, we should tap into drawing out our policies and all these other little business ventures and things, you know? And she was like, yeah, 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 but, you know, and so I said to myself, I battle with that now. I want to run it up so much, but not utilizing things that's be obvious right in your face to utilize mm -hmm. even somebody you know i tell go ahead no, no i was saying I, I i do you know tell a lot of people that i have these kinds of conversations with just coming and going right you know and, and it's funny you were talking to your wife about this and i was talking to my wife about it yesterday as well and and i told her i said well um right now i think we're getting in my policies right now with the company i'm with like five percent on my cash bucket right that's not bad and i told her and you're right and i told her i said uh if we find something that's going to return us ten percent then it makes sense to pull that money out right big time it makes sense it makes too much sense i know of plenty things to do with it the, the, the biggest thing is slicing that it takes five years to make some money back. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing nowadays on investment. I don't want to wait five years. Mm -hmm. I want to build it in 12 months, turnkey, and money's coming in when we open the doors. Mm -hmm. you, hear, you hear me? I know a few mm -hmm. things that I've seen. I got a buddy that's doing outstandingly well in real estate development. Mm -hmm. and he had from, from high-end rental properties, right? Mm -hmm. For artists that don't want to stay in hotels, like that don't want that type of traffic, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I see Jared Wright just wrote, what are your thoughts on home equity loans or divesting, um, uh, he might've said investing loans or investing 401ks to use for investment investing into lieu on hand cash and capital can you see that can you see that written up there yeah i can see it okay awesome so um what i would say again not financial advice but what i will say is that um if it were me and and i had the opportunity to take out a home equity loan on my own property that i own right if i saw an opportunity right to make more money than that money is going to cost me mm -hmm. then it makes sense right it, may, it, it makes too much sense sure. right if the if you're take if, if i was going to take a home equity to get a 55 inch screen uh projector tv to put out in the backyard that makes no sense right because i'm about to 
take this equity out of my house to do something that's not going to make me any more money. All right. Um, if it was if it was me, I wouldn't do it. But if I if it would if, if it was going to get me in a position where if that home equity line of credit was going to run up my 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 mortgage, my new mortgage because you read you're actually essentially uh, getting another 30 years or another higher loan, right? On on new money, right? And so the interest rate, let's just say it's 6% now, right? Mm -hmm. If it's going to cost me 6% to use this money for me, I need to be making at least 12% mm -hmm. on whatever I'm about to spend that money on. I need to be at least making 12%, you, right? You saw, you saw what he just said, right? You saw what he just said. He want to cover the interest rate and make a profit. You got to do the research. It's okay. Like, I, I jump out there wholeheartedly on investments. I, I just feel it in my gut. It's good. I, I, I get all that, right? Crunch them numbers. Mr. Shaw just told y'all, if he don't see no light on the other side of the percentage that's equal or more value, he's not doing it, right? That's wise for us as we are adults, seasoned adults, looking to see what are we doing for our tomorrows, right? We should not, everybody isn't able to, but we should not, we should be thinking about retirement when it comes to other spaces of our lives. And I'm not putting nobody on the same page, but this is the conversations that we need to have. These are conversations that we need to have. What are you doing with your money? Are you making any money? Do you have any savings? Why is your money just sitting in a bank not earning a little of nothing of interest? Why don't your money have legs, arms, and wings flying, walking, and swimming somewhere to be making you more money? Your money should be on a treadmill, constantly motion, moving, and doing something. We'll never see the same dollar twice. So why try to hold on to something? The biggest gamble and biggest bet investment you can make is into yourself. And my man, Mr. Shaw, is giving you options right now to do with it. A lot of my musical buddies made a ton of money, whether they're producers, whether they're executives, whether they're artists, and they kind of blew through the money. Don't get me wrong, you got to go through life and expenses, but just think about it. If you had known that, hey, I could have took these $3 million and I could have went into investments over here, I could have put it into a trust, I could have did something, I could have joined the hedge fund or something, and hey, my living expenses are 35000 a year. That's, you know, just throwing a number out there. You know what I'm saying? It's not mine, it's not yours, I'm just throwing a number. You can say, hey, I'm going to draw the interest off uh, three million, or you know, and I'm a now my living expenses are covered, right? And now I got I could go ahead and make some investments. I could take the three million, I can go get a 12 million dollar loan on mm -hmm. the three, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things that could be done, and don't let these numbers scare you, they're just numbers, they're just numbers. First, you start with the plan, you do your research. Do your research, then you do your research again. It's like a, a, it's like a carpenter. We're gonna have to measure twice, cut once. So once mm -hmm. you get the plan together, you can follow through. You hear me? So I'm hoping that everyone is tuned in. I'm gonna leave this on the page. I want you to share this. I want you to tap in to Deontay Shaw, Mr. Deontay Shaw. Any questions that you have for him? Whether Brother now, John, yeah, I want to finish. This is question of Jerry. He asked about the four hundred one k, right? Yes, quick. Bad, please. Bottom. So, so the four hundred one k. You asked if you can use it for. Would you, you know, using it for investing in lieu of on hand cash or capital? Um, what I always say, and again, not financial advice. What I would always say is that if it were me, my four hundred one k would never get touched, right? And the reason that my four hundred one k would never get touched, I would keep putting money into it, is because of the penalties associated with it when you take the money out. Mm -hmm. right that's it's penalties associated with that right but more importantly you want to have options in retirement right you want to have, have options you want to have the ability to pull money from here or from here or from here or wherever it, wherever it is i talk to my clients about having buckets of money right but money a money bucket a b c b e f g right mm -hmm. and at any time you could turn the bucket 
it off, the turn to speak it off on this one, the turn to speak it on on this one, right? Oh, my tax, I'm getting into a different tax bracket. Let me turn that off. Let me pull money over here. The stock market doing bad. Let me turn that off. Let me pull money from over here. That allows you to move and be nimble, right? right. Um, that's what I would do, right? That's right. For, for myself. That's my plan. Right. But as you mentioned about having a plan, right, your money don't get tired, right? Your money don't get sleepy, right? Your money can work 24-7 in this world that we live in, right? And so that's that's where I that's where I come in and that's what I do, right? I help my clients as, as their financial advisor figure out what they should and should not be doing, right? Money in the bank, three to six months, emergency fund. Right. So if your living expenses are eighteen hundred or let's just say a thousand dollars for easy math, a thousand dollars a month, those are living living expenses. You should have anywhere between three and six thousand dollars sitting in the bank at any given time. Guess what? The rest of the money you need to be putting elsewhere in order for it to go to work. Mm. Right. That money ain't making no money in the bank. It don't need to. That money don't need to because that's easy access money when you got to go. Uh, some major repair at the house or you need to you, you had an accident out here in New Orleans you drive crazy right you had an accident guess what you need to put that car in the shop you got your your deductible right there no right, problem right, right right so all of these things we I put it what I do is with my clients I put a I always tell them if you had a crystal ball that could kind of predict to you what your future would look like financially right based upon all the things that you want to do and how you want to move mm -hmm. from this point all the way till you retire. Mm -hmm. If you had a crystal ball, I could present you something that would mimic a crystal ball, mm -hmm. a full spread of if you do A, B, and C, and D. Actually, it goes, if you do nothing, just what you're doing now, this is what it's going to look mm -hmm. like. It could look good for you or it could look bad for you, right? right? right. But if it's going to look bad for you, then guess what? This is what we need to do, right. Right? right? And we need to start here. And we need to do these things. And we need to get there. And boom, boom, boom. This is a plan, a roadmap. I right. would say an atlas to your future. Straight up, hey, bro. He he didn't he didn't hit it on the nail. You heard me? He didn't hit it on the nail. And he's basically telling you also he could be someone that can advise you on your situations. You heard me? Jared Wright also put it on here. What are your thoughts on trust? on inheritance versus probate. I know a few people who have lost big due to probate courts. I'm not a uh, I'm not a probate or a trust attorney, but I do have one on my team, right? And so part of foundational planning is getting that situated. Inheritance, meaning someone who deserves, right? People who deserve mm -hmm. a thing or two or whatever you leave it behind for them, right? right? right. Um, I definitely me personally, if it was me and the way I'm set up is with the trust, right? Right, Because a trust is you're leaving instructions on how you want things to go, right? Sure. I want A, B, C, D. Um, I want these things to happen. Um, and, and one of my books I read, um, it talked about how the Rockefellers left a trust, right? <laughs> they left they left they, they left opportunity for their kids. They didn't leave them money per se. Like here's a million dollars, two million, three million. Everybody get a million, right? right. They didn't do that. Right. They left opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. They left opportunity for their children. They got a, they got a, um, they got a what we call a overfunded whole life policy. Mm -hmm. They left that policy inside of a trust. And what they did was they left that trust there for their children to say, if you want to start a business, you can come to the trust. Get the money to start a business. But guess what? The way you're going to pay it back is one of two ways. You're either going to pay the trust back directly or you're going to wait. You're going to pay the trust back directly, but you're also going to get a life insurance policy, a whole life policy in the amount or greater than what you borrowed from the That's trust. That's genius. That's genius. To make sure that it's replaced regardless of what Boom. happens. Man, that's genius. So so you can never pay it back to the trust if you don't want to. But guess what? When you die, because right. you're going to die. Right. When you die, that money is going to the trust. It's going to keep. And that money will never go it's away. It's going to keep that village alive. 
it's that opportunity by financially right. for whatever that they could do to keep that legacy that is genius bro that and is so that, that's how the rockefellers maintain their wealth to this day that is right genius. Bro, instead man. of them giving the money right. to them they gave them opportunity right that is genius bro wow bro wow that is genius bro someone is going to see this someone is going to be helped by this a lot of people are going to be contacting you did y'all just hear that bro the way to keep this thing going you know what i mean we out here scraping and crawling behind money but once you touch something you put it in a trust and you leave instructions on how the kids should do what and make them tap into whole life insurance policies to win no matter what they do the money's going to be repaid so now their children's children will have the same opportunity the children have and then their children children ch that's genius bro genius you heard me that's big bro hey man i know you're a busy fellow mm -hmm. you heard me? i so appreciate you taking time out today and i want to let y'all know after this year feel free to comment share this by repost this as many times as you like get it hey why don't you let us know um your social handles and if you have a business email of course and a business a business contact so a lot of people could tap in all right so y'all get y'all pens and papers out i'm gonna tell y'all right now you can get me on deontay that's d is in delta e-o-n t is in tom a y shaw s-h-a-w on facebook i'm the cool guy in a black shirt with some glasses looking out at the miami skyline I know that's, right. that's me right. <laughs> so, so. so look so look i'm on i'm on i'm on um inst i'm on instagram dollar chaser you can't forget that, that dollar chaser right planning for you guru on instagram planning for you guru on twitter planning for you the number four you guru so you can dope. reach out to me um my email is my first name deontay period shaw my last name at n m in m november mike.com so you can get at me like that you can send me a message however you want to you know have you know get to me to have this conversation i invite any anyone and everybody and that's right cool is in session hey man all we could do is bring you the coolest information that's the whole project is about waking up the superhero within us to be activated baby you know what i'm saying to wake up the eight-year-old the ten-year-old that was fearless you heard me regardless of your gender to get back activated baby i know life will come at you all kind of ways and make you get out here get the adulting you heard me but we're gonna need that young youthful fearless you to help the adult you to go ahead and conquer these mountains like you need to. You heard me? Hey, bro, all his information is available. Do not be intimidated on contacting him. You heard me? I'm quite sure he will be the additional space you need to take you to different new time spaces and places to make new memories and new money. You heard me? <laughs> hey, Mr. Shaw, brother, I so appreciate you taking time out your day uh being selfless with the information that you share with the people today on our first installment of mr shaw coming on here talking about finances life insurances and what to properly do with a trust for people that you love you heard me so um bro can't thank you enough man and big ups to you man i can't thank you enough man like Respect. hey look this is what we do i'm you know as, as you already you know what it is well you know it's already understood right yeah. so this is what we do so uh at the end of the day man I, I appreciate what you doing appreciate you for inviting me on here um i was listening to 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 one of your interviews with um with bizarre mm. right and he was talking about something that was so powerful man on how he went to how um eminem called him out to california he, you know d12 they're my people right for sure, for I, sure. I gotta represent right <laughs> that's right so right, right. so he was talking about how he M called him from Dallas to go out to California. Right. You know, when he got out there, he got another call that his first call, he was like, yeah, I, I'm about to make it happen, right? right? But it was the second call that he got that actually was like, now you in your own lane, now you're doing the thing that you've been trying to do. And what I want to tell people is that story, it it, it, it really resonated with me because it's like this we always and i and i and i want to close with this and we always stop right before we get to the win mm. right 
we all, always stop and just and I thought about him and I said just think what if he would have got to California and he would have just sat there and waited on him and Dre to figure out what they was going to do and how they was going to do it it may never it, it may have never happened right. in the timeline that it happened right. had he not said you know what even though I came all the way out here I'm going to keep pressing towards the mark I'm going to head back to Detroit and, and, and mess with them and boom right so, so you got to keep going, y'all. You got to keep seeking knowledge. You got YouTube. You got books out here. You got uh, brothers like International Jones right here. Now you guys know about me. Keep pressing so, towards the market. So, so, hey, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, as always, you being of service. You know what I'm saying? As always, a good man being a better man. You feel me? Right. I appreciate you. May God continue to watch over your steps. I am here accessible, whatever you may need me for, my brother. You heard me? me? Too. Yeah, man. Always peace and love. Talk to you soon, my brother. If you need me, hit me up. Y'all get that, Mr. Deontay Shaw. Peace out. All right. Peace. Peace. Who got that fire? Won't you pass me the grease so I can hire? I want to know.